to interview a couple of our partners. Um, I would consider them my sisters now because they always be up on me. You know, like, the, like I only have one sister, my my real uh, blood sister, but I feel like these gals are uh, my sisters now, and and I just uh, I really appreciate these guys, and they've done phenomenal things in the business. So um, without further ado, uh, Jen Soon and Sarah Kwan. Hello, guys. Hi. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, are you sweating a little bit yet? Are you guys nervous? No, I'm just kidding. The nervous smile right here. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome. You know what? Um, a lot of us uh, already know you, so this is just a conversation. But we do want to have you share, you know, how you started in real estate, and you know your ten-year journey for Sarah, and then your fourteen-year journey for for Jen. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I got into real estate because my mom is actually a realtor. She got licensed around the time that I was born. <laughs> And uh, prior to real estate, I was in sales. And so after a couple conversations with my mother, kind of, uh, you know, streamlined that process. And 10 years later, here I am. So that's how I got into the industry. Yeah. Um, for myself, I've always been in sales and um, selling cosmetics, baby skills, menswear, which transitioned to real estate. And um, other than knowing that, my end goal was to help people, right? Yeah, so here I am. Awesome, awesome guys. And uh, well, I just wanted to bring this up. Sarah, uh, you are, <laughs> I didn't want to say this, but you, you, you're you way more knowledgeable than I thought you were in real estate. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> no, and, and you were already at a high level and what you shared on Clubhouse really blew me away of how much you know about investments, um, how the market flows. Um, I already thought you're a great agent, but you're a phenomenal, phenomenal agent. And uh, and I just found out recently that you're a second gen. So that that really, really makes sense. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, collaboration because first of all, you guys are both moms, super busy, and you give so much to our group. So I, first of all, I want to say thank you on behalf of our group. Uh, us 90 agents locally here that you guys have been a huge contribution. But also, I think from the collaboration that we have, you have benefited as well in your businesses. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So thank you for that first. <laughs> I think um, in terms of uh, it's been huge because when we started, it was such a small and intimate group. And, you know, I knew you, I knew Jen, but not on, not on a personal level. I mean, if we trace back, I, I met Sarah on Instagram, actually, yeah. prior to us um, being with EXP. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because we just connected like normal people, but um, it, it's been quite a journey to... It has. It has. And it's interesting because... The more Jen and I learn about each other, we realize just how similar our background stories are. Yes. Um, so I think that's why we work so closely together and, and why we have a similar mindset and are on kind of the same field with a lot of what our beliefs are. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of collaboration, um, I think just naturally, like, I'm, you know, if, for those of you who know me, I'm a very open person. So very much what you see is what you get. And I think for, you know, yourself, John, Jen. Oh, you're muted. You muted yourself. You muted yourself. Or... Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, so that came naturally just because when you're surrounded by people who have a similar mindset to you and are just open to collaboration, it, it comes so naturally and it, and it was really a nice change in the industry because prior to, you know, prior to me coming to EXP, I was with a different brokerage for eight years and, you know, I'd been on a team, but when you ask people certain questions like, oh, how did you do this? Or how do you do that? They, there's this, this, this big block and, you know, so you, you kind of come to the, you know, conclusion that, okay, well, this is just how the industry is. And when, you know, I got to work with you guys, it was such, um, it was so refreshing to know that there are other people who are just open to sharing that knowledge and, you know, just because they want to. And, that, and 
it's been amazing. Yeah. I, I think, think it kind of, yeah, it really <clears throat> does. Yeah. And, and I think um, under this culture, the model that we have as well, um, we're just more inclined to share with each other. Not that we weren't, um, you know, generous people before, but like under this model, I just feel like we have collaborated and we share secrets even more. And that has led to you guys being able to do what you have done in your businesses. Now, Sarah, I want to talk about you first uh, because you, you set a goal last year and we talked a couple times on coaching calls. She said, uh, I wanted to make a hundred thousand, you know, this is a big topic of a realtor making a hundred thousand is like a benchmark. Right. And lo and behold in 2020, how, how, how much was your income that you made? 200. 200. Okay. You doubled your goal. Now, did you ever think it was possible or it just naturally happened? So a lot of people, so when you posted that on, on Instagram, a lot of people came to me and they were surprised that I'd never hit hundred thousand dollars. And the reason being is, you know, I was on a team previously and I had a steep split. So uh -huh. even when I was busting my ass, I was never able to achieve that. And then after having kids, um, because I'm a second generation realtor and I'm a child of a realtor and I know how hectic, you know, like working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Like I was in constantly in activities, like my school day, I went to English school and then Chinese school right after. So Monday to Friday, I was in school from like nine till five or six at night. So my mom could work and I'm losing my train of thought now. Sorry. <laughs> um, and so doubling your income. Oh yes. Doubling my income. Thank you. Um, and so I had this mental block where I felt I wasn't able to achieve a certain income because that meant taking time away from my children. And so without even getting there, I already had that guilt um, mm. that I'd been harboring for so long. And when just having those conversations with you guys and, you know, like just expressing what my goals were and getting over that, that, that mental, I guess, hurdle, um, I was able to achieve, you know, that hundred thousand um, dollars. I want to say like August, September. And when I hit that, I was like, oh my God, like it, it was so much easier than I thought it would, it would have been. And, and then I, I, I changed my goal and ended the year really strong. And I want to thank you guys for that because you guys have been really um, monumental, I think in my success. And so thank you. Both. Thank, thank you. Um, you have been inspiring us as well, Sarah. And uh, I'm a believer that, uh, you know, who you hang out with is who you become. And if you're hanging out with people who are doing a little bit more, it just comes naturally. Um, but I do want to touch on some something about what you said just now is the guilt. It's the mom guilt, right? Like, I, I can't go to 200,000 unless I sacrifice time with my kids. How did you get over that? And how is family life now that you've, um, you know, achieved this uh, pinnacle? Um, really just letting go and allowing myself. It was believing that I was worthy of it. And I think that was really, really difficult for me in the beginning. Like understanding like, okay, I'm worthy of making this amount of money and just letting go a little bit. Like I didn't let go of everything immediately. It, it didn't come like that. I, I let go of things in, in, in small steps. And then, like I said, like once I hit my initial goal, I was like, okay, it's really not that bad. And, you know, mm -hmm. I still was able to spend more time with my kids than the average person who works nine to five, because, you know, like everyone comes to real estate for time freedom, but not realizing that our, our hours are kind of all over the place. But in a sense, it's kind of a blessing because I can do some of the stuff that I don't need to do in the middle of the day after I put my kids to sleep. And so um, just finding that balance. This, this reminds me a bit about, there's, um, there's something called, uh, where's that fear of growth? Where you, you feel that you're at a cap and therefore you perform at that. Yes. And it's a mindset thing. Yes. It's right? like a thermometer, right? If, you're, if your thermometer is over here at uh, 100,000, it's scary to go above it. Correct. Right? There's a ceiling. That's a glass ceiling that you put on yourself. It's a fear of, you know, what if I achieve the success, right? And then once you get close to it, you're like, okay, well, I'm not worthy of that. So you sabotage yourself, right? And, you know, finally, Sarah has broken through because of the collaboration, because of, you know, what we have in terms of our culture. Um, I, I, at least I think that, that that's why. And, 
know, is, is it? <laughs> I just want to come no, yeah, no, I, I, we, I, We've talked about this before, right? And um, in terms of time with my kids right now, I mean, thankfully I have, you know, really good support from my husband and my mother-in-law and my mom. So they, they help watch the kids because during the pandemic, you know, we pulled our son out of preschool and I have, so I have a four-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. Wow. So they're at home a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I try and get them, I'm trying to get them more involved with things. So when I'm looking on, you know, MLS to have my daughter on my lap and my son loves my videos, mm -hmm. he loves her car, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, you know, but they, um, they kind of have an understanding for what I'm doing. And I think getting them involved and starting to do that more in the process of, you know, what mommy does, mm -hmm. then the two can kind of intertwine because a lot of what we do on an everyday basis gets intertwined with any of the re relationships that we have on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You, you've uh, incorporated kind of work into your, your, your personal life as well. And the, the kids get it now. That's what mommy does, right? Yeah. And uh, you always look energetic. I don't know how you guys do it. I know uh, Crystal, it's, it's really uh, tough on her. Like I, I basically do nothing at home. Like whatever is behind me, it's all her work, like everything around the house. So I have much respect to moms and you have two of them. So it's, it's crazy what you do. Big, big congratulations. And uh, yeah, so let's move on to Jen. Jen, so I wanna talk about you a little bit. Mm -hmm. this, these couple years, I think is the first time you've, actually let go a little bit and delegated. What has that experience been like? And what, what was a switch? Um, I think this goes back to being around the right people, growing out of that solo mentality to grow into a team aspect. Because I take pride in my level of doing anything. And, and you know, um, you know, you need an answer. I, I got it. Right. So it's one of those things where it's, it's control and just letting go and the fear of letting go. And what if I let go and something were to happen, but it came down to the people. Cause as soon as I found the right people that I trusted, I let go a little, I'm like, okay, this is not so bad. <laughs> right. And then, so you add on a little bit more, um, but you still have to have a little control because otherwise it's just, I might go a little insane, <laughs> but the growth behind that has allowed me to uh, open up my mindset. And I think that's where the growth is happening because all of a sudden I feel like I'm working less mm. or more. So I, I want to say that I probably, well, I'm like two quarters ahead right now, based on that, just letting go. Two quarters ahead. Tell, two quarters you... ahead. So let's say, for example, um, I, I was set to cap like right at the end of fall last year, right? This year, um, I'm set to cap next month. Oh, wow. Right. So partly, you know, the, the market and everything like that, but I truly believe having people on the team and you guys kind of helping the process um, help push it there. I mean, you kind of have to have that ammo to kind of just get there, right? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, big congratulations. I mean, I, I think uh, these couple of years are probably your best years in, in real estate so far, right? Right. And, and uh, yeah. you guys aren't working more, right? We're working less. <laughs> like we have time time to do videos and time to be on social media not to say that those are income producing activities but it's connecting with the world and yeah. the people out there right to kind of keep us sane as well truly inspiring uh, I'm, I'm inspired every day just by being um and looking at what you guys do every single day um i want to talk a little bit about you also you know inspiring me as uh, inspiring us locally and all over north america in our group um, you have this new thing called Moms and Real Estate. Tell us more about that. So Sarah and I, uh, being moms, we felt there was a need out there. Um, as we grew, we realized that we all talk about time freedom, money freedom, and uh, getting rid of that mom guilt. And I think it's part of our healing process because yes. our stories are very similar. Hmm. Networking parents and we ourselves teach ourselves a whole lot. Um, so we've teamed up to create a bit of a project to um, strive for time freedom and financial freedom and just being
getting a support with other agents and similar industries, right? So connect with us. We would love to hear your story and how we can help. Um, but that's kind of where our project is going, right? Yeah, we're mm -hmm. on Clubhouse as well. So Instagram and Clubhouse and just trying to share and collaborate. Um, but uh, do feel free to reach out one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so is, is this uh, Moms and Real Estate, is it inspiring other moms in real estate or like all over, you know, whoever is a working mom type of thing? Both. 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 Okay. We, we want to make an impact to all moms that are working, but because we're in real estate, we can speak to real estate more highly. Yeah. Yeah. You are truly inspiring to all moms. I mean, last week we had uh, Leilani, you, you guys are all kind of in the same boat. Um, and you all have been working less and making more. Who wants to work less and make more money? Two hands. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> get connected to these two. They, I, I think they got it figured out. Obviously, we're still all growing and all figuring out. But I think uh, they're, they're one step ahead of a lot of moms that I see, you know, stressing out, taking care of kids, not able to delegate, have that mom guilt. So thanks again for, for inspiring us. So, you know, Today, when you guys are producing at a high level, you're inspiring other moms. Um, let me ask this question. What's your why? Um, my why has changed over the years, obviously. Um, my children, they are something that I inspire. And the thing is, I have to be an example for them. So what I do, I have to show them that, you know, especially, you know, I have a daughter, we both have daughters, that we are strong women, that we can do this and that we can be in an industry that, you know, has, you know, a lot of men in the industry and still outperform some, like we can, we can do it and we can do it on our own. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I think we're both very, very independent, even yes. though we have partners, we're very, very independent. And that's why we are the way that we are. Um, so for me, it's, it's definitely my kids and I want to be able to create something for them. So, you know, even though I'm building something in real estate, I'm also building a piece of side income and, and passive income that I can essentially pass over to them, you mm -hmm. know, whether, I mean, I don't know if any of my kids want to be a third generation realtor. I can't guarantee that, but if I can build something for them, that is going to be there because I know it, it, things are going to be harder as time progresses. You know, if a home in Vancouver you know, if dirt in Vancouver is 1.3 now, what's it going to be like in, in 20 years when they're ready to, you know, or when they're in a position to buy a place, right? That, that That's a really scary thought. So I, I want to be able to provide something for them. And uh, that's that's my why. Yeah. Oh, so it's all for the kids. You basically, you know, you work a lot, work efficiently. Um, doing all this is all for the two kids. Yes. And myself too. I mean, I want to be happy in that process, right? Like I want to, I don't want to be working seven days a week, 12 hours a day now, um, because I know what that feels like as a child. And mm. I want to be able to have that balance now while still progressing in life. And I want to be happy and, and to be able to have and create those memories along the way. I want it all. I'm sorry. I just want it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all want to have it all, believe me. And, uh, you know, it, it looks like from, from what I see anyway, like you, you really do have it all. So, you know, I, I really appreciate um, watching you guys grow. And it's amazing. It's amazing what you're doing. How about Jen? What's your why? I think my strongest, or I know my strongest why is time and uh, time with family and time. I mean, for 14 years, and my friends know this, okay? Just, hey, do you wanna go do this? <laughs> oh, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta see, I might have an appointment, and, you know, I gotta open a house, and that time will never be bought back. Mm. But if I had the ability to create that time, and through time comes, well, of course, you have to be financially where you are, right? You don't wanna have to think about, well, if I lose this opportunity, am I gonna lose out next month's income? Right? right so if we can actually set this up where i could be like hey let's do it let's let's just go to hawaii for two weeks i want to have that ability to do that because i'm just kind of sick and tired of being the one who's grinding and not being able to experience it all not i'm not to say that people who don't ha who have the money are more happy but just being able to like just take a weekend off and let's let's just go do something you know with family and creating those memories and yes you know creating a whole lifetime of everything but um i think it, the little part there is is the time 
So I think it's time freedom and financial freedom yeah. mm. without having to sacrifice one for the other. Yeah. Okay. You know, today when we, when we define wealth, um, it's no longer just about the numbers, the net worth and the money anymore. It's more so like how much more time can I spend with my kids without having to worry about finances? I think that's true, true wealth and obviously health as well. But I think what you guys are both aligned with is that you want to build a legacy for the kids, right? And for yourself to be happy today and also time freedom. Yes, because I think in, in any entrepreneurship type business and especially real estate, it's really, really hard to have both or even one, right? Time freedom or financial freedom, but to have, to be able to have both, I think is really, really difficult to achieve, but well, we we'll, have- We'll flip flop back and forth all the time, but yeah. having the option to just yes. flick the switch and say, okay, it's time today. And then tomorrow it's going to be money or whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. So through this journey, I want to ask you guys, you guys are always like ultra positive all the time. I, I don't, I don't see you guys get down too, too much at all. Does doubt ever seep into your mind and get you down? Because I know, Jen, like you're like mama bear for everybody. And I don't ever see you down. Like, is there some, are there some moments where doubt seeps in and then you like have a down day? At least I don't know. You guys never come to me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, you're human. I'm we're human. We're human, but... <laughs> Uh, so like sometimes like in certain situations, like, you know, I do get anxiety, right? Like, so there are days where I'm just like stressing out, I, I have anxiety, but for me, I think overall and, and, and through experiences in my life, I'm pretty good at handling stress mm -hmm. because I know that there's something else out there beyond whatever it is that I'm dealing with and that this is just life and whatever the case may be. So I'm pretty, for me, I, I'm pretty good at handling stress. Um, on a day to day. I, I agree with you, but um, to counteract that, I just take action. So as mm. soon as I feel some doubt, then I just need to find a solution because once I get that solution, I work through it. There is no more doubt. Yeah. Right. I like, I love that. I love that. And I, I wrote down just randomly last night, just on Twitter, I just opened it up and I said, uh, anxiety is reduced by taking action. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Right, right. So doubt and stress does come into your life, but you just take action. You don't stop. I, something about moms. I look at Crystal as well when she says, oh, my God, I'm so tired today. And yet she's like up doing the laundry and then like taking it. <laughs> so I think mom had this like superpower. And uh, I, so from what you're saying is same thing. It's like when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling anxiety, get up and take some action. Or else you're just gonna spiral into that negativity, right? Yes, and and I think also honestly being around you guys, like being around people who have that positive mindset, kind of gets you out of that hump. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, if if John's not crying, why am I crying? <laughs> right? I just don't know when I cry. I cry. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. It's just it's it's reflective of the people you're around again, right? I think that's so important and people don't always get to see that and because they don't have a comparison right yeah that's awesome and i think um i want to come back to this mastermind thing right because we we are the the literally the founders of um vancouver masterminds and i think we built something really really special when you're alone a lone wolf uh you just do things on your own and then you go in high right with a mastermind you just like you said, like you, you see someone, you know, producing at a high level and they're willing to help you and you mastermind with them. You just pull each other up so quickly. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, oh, oh, by the way, uh, Vancouver masterminds, these are the founders right here. And actually I want to give kudos to Sarah, the power half hour name, came <laughs> from program, just so you know. So thank you, Sarah. Well, thank awesome. you for, for doing this every week because it's <laughs> <to learn. laughs> It's become such a such a great thing as a contribution back to the real estate industry, you know, to, to the agents that are, you know, looking for some inspiration, especially midweek. They need something, right? So thank you for being here today. Um, guys, what does five, 10, 15 years in the future look like for you and your real estate business? 
Oof. Um, five years is I want to continue the growth that I'm on, um, continue growing our team and, and building it like a proper business, not just I am the one who does everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, you know, in, in 10 years time, I can step back and relax and have that time freedom. Um, but also I want to be able to, to duplicate what I'm doing and support other people in the process so they can achieve the same thing as well. Um, I think that's, that's my five, 10 year plan it, it, in, a, in a small gist of it. <laughs> yeah, so I think. Team leverage and teach others how to do it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The formula is when you want to grow, you need more hands, yeah. right? So the more hands you have, the more growth you'll have. Um, and I think you will never be able to like fully duplicate, but if we can find people that have the same core values and have the same vision, we're just gonna, you know, hop on a boat and we're just gonna get there. Yeah. Right. Together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. So really you guys are on the same page and, and you guys are on the real estate team together. So you're building something together, leveraging together. And then you want to attract um, other moms or whoever that's aligned with us, our message like-minded okay. people and build the same thing but yes. that's when real estate can become fun again right because real estate alone is a grind right when you have partners in a mastermind it's fun so. we talked about this number of times where um i think because we have some maturity in our businesses it does get a little lonely however if we're able to contribute to um lost my train of thought like other people's growth um there's some fulfillment that comes to it right if i can if by me helping others i'm actually helping myself yes. i feel good about myself and all of a sudden the attention is not on me and then that's where you don't have doubt right because you're taking action yeah yes the action in contributing to others um fulfillment is actually born by uh contribution and growth if you're growing every single day and you feel like you're contributing to something every single day, then you have purpose and that's when fulfillment comes in. This is from Tony Robbins, not from me. I'm not that wise. Um, we have a question from Crystal. What structures slash schedule do you moms have in place? And when it doesn't go as planned, how do you deal with that? Oh, you can go first. You're better than oh, I am. Okay. For me, it's schedule. So I know my non, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? non-negotiable for example if i was to say you know mondays i want to be able to pick up for three o'clock so i'm going to get everything i can done between nine and three right and i'm going to keep everything behind three flexible right mm -hmm. that i can do with her so if it is like i don't know i i do the laundry and all that stuff like after i don't or i might pop it into the machine before I leave, but I'll try to do everything between nine and three. Uh, and then if plans derail, like, you know, you get a call from daycare and they're like, oh no, you know, they've got a stomach bug, please pick them up. Then what happens is you're just gonna, sh again, replace that time for something else. Um, but the non-negotiables have to be in place. Mm. Non-negotiables first, mm -hmm. got it. Sarah? Yeah. Um, I'm still working on this because I still have the two at home. I, we just recently put our son back into preschool and then he caught a cold and so he's back home right now. <laughs> but also I think having like those schedules for your kids, especially because mine are so young and them having that expectation, like if you do things in a certain schedule, they know what's going to come next. And so there's less push from them when doing those things. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm a little different because you know, my husband and myself, we both are entrepreneurs and mm. we didn't go to school for what we're in. And I, I, with my son, when he was younger, I was a little more academic with him and, you know, teaching him all these things, but I'm a little more, um, relaxed, relaxed with my person. daughter and, uh, more learning from play, mm. uh, than, than my son, but it's so bad because she's, she's, she's a terror and my son will correct her because he's learned those things from myself from when he was young. Yeah, but I'm a little, I'm a lot more relaxed now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, you guys are opposing um, forces on this one then, because you got structure, you got non-negotiables first. Yeah. And then yeah. Sarah, you're more flexible in it. So you just kind of deal with whatever comes. And now you have a little helper helping the little one. 
<laughs> well, no, I, I still think structure is important because like I said, having them have that structure so they know what's coming next. Um, but I was just saying in terms of like educating them, like I'm more play-based as opposed to, okay, well, you have to learn ABCs and, and all this stuff. I, I still do that because that's just kind of how I am, but right. um, not as not as forcing it upon my kids as, mm. as they're kids and they're going to learn and yeah, we'll be just fine. Just letting it fall. And when uh, shit hits the fan, just let it hit the fan. <laughs> we'll figure <laughs> it out. Like, right? <laughs> yeah. And it helps that for us, I mean, we could do everything from our phones, right? Because right. we're virtual. So it's just, I don't know how many times have I like given her a bath and do a contract on the phone. And, you know, there's just so many, there's so many efficient ways that we could save time that it works. Well, you guys are super moms and we really, really appreciate all that you've done for the group and keep inspiring. How can uh, people get a hold of you guys? How can they follow you, join your group? Um, please follow me on Instagram. That's where I am the most of the time. Um, at Sarah Kwan, so S-A-R-A-H-K-W-A-N, and that's the best way to reach me. If you guys have any questions, you want some help regarding stuff, just feel free to reach out through um, through Instagram. Yeah, and I have my personal IG as well, Jennifer Lee Soon, uh, and then you can also catch us on Moms in Real Estate on IG as well. When is your next Clubhouse chat? Friday, 11 a.m. Friday, 11 a.m. Guys, Follow these two powerhouses. Guys, thank you so much for your contribution as always and today. Make it a great day, guys. Thank See you. Bye. Bye.